The next several slides, I want to go through just several applications and demonstrations of diamond as they relate to biological applications specifically. So I'll start mostly whole body imaging and targeting with BEGF is the work that our group and collaborators did over the past couple years under a phase one or in phase two contract from NIH. The primary goal of our research in this endeavor was to use the diamonds to label tumors in vivo and then to image, image the particles in vivo. So the question that we initially had was, well, can you actually visualize these particles in vivo with whole body imaging? And that actually hadn't been, hadn't been done before, especially with an intravenous injection. It had been done with subcantious injections, so just injections under the skin in mice, but not just administered in vivo via intravenous injection. So we took these mice and injected them through the tail vein with increasing concentrations of approximately 170 nanometer particles and imaged them at uh, IBIS, and this was done at Duke University. And with the, the IVIS system is an in, in vivo imaging system. Excitation, these are showing just two different excitations, 605 and 640. And we see accumulation in really mostly the spleen and liver, which is kind of expected because those are the filtering organs, right? So you do see this increased signal versus the control, control mice with no diamonds. And this is, again, that figure because we ended up doing this tissue digestion with these spleens, actually. And this is where you can see the increasing, increasing administration dose and then increasing obvious uh, concentration of the particles in the digested tissue. So then the conclusion is that, yes, okay, we can see the diamond particles in vivo with whole body imaging. So then the next step is then to see, well, let's, oh, I should add, uh, these mice do not have tumors on them yet. So the next step we wanted to do, since we want to target tumors, is to then introduce tumors into the mice. This application instead of, but we first don't want to use targeting. So this application is going to rely on this EPR, enhanced permeation or tension effect, which is essentially just, okay, it, it's this non-specific uptake of particles that tumors will exhibit because they kind of just consume everything around them. So anything going around them will kind of get taken up by this tumor. So this is kind of what I would say non-specific. So it's, it's not targeted. And what we did end up seeing, so the, these are non-targeted diamonds, but into, injected into mice with tumors. And we can actually see with ex vivo, even ex vivo analysis, and this was done with uh, IBIS as well. So this is just taking out the organ and looking at it, it's fluorescence emission intensity. Uh, so we do see in versus a control, which is just a dextrose buffer. Uh, we do see an increase in the fluorescent emission intensity of the tumor and then the spleen and liver. So there has to be some, there is some merit, obviously, to this EPR effect, and it potentially could be used to label tumors. However, EPR is, in and of itself is quite heterogeneous, so it's not an ideal technique to use to label tumors. So the next step is then to target the tumor directly, but first we needed to develop a targeting vehicle and a scheme to do that. And what we chose was to use VEGF or vascular endothelial growth factor. And VEGF is essentially a class of proteins which, are, which stimulate vasculature growth. And they're involved not only with tumors, but also in, you might imagine, uh, wound healing, things of that sort, and uh, tissue growth. So essentially what happens with a tumor is that these cancerous cells rapidly need, they need oxygen, they're oxygen starved. They need, so this causes tissue necrosis around surrounding them. So what they do is they, there is a feedback loop which then drives these cells to overexpress VEGF, VEGFR receptors on their surface. So there's, first they start to output more VEGF protein itself and then a feedback loop then causes these cells to overexpress these receptors. So, and then that stimulates this angiogenic kind of rampant uh, vasculature growth which feeds the tumor and continues its growth. But the thing is, if we can functionalize our diamonds with VEGF, we can exploit that as a means to target our, uh, these overexpressing cells, so these tumor cells. So we did that via a click chemistry route, and I will not go into extensive details of that, but it's essentially uh, relies on transcyclooctene tetrazine chemistry. So it's just biothorganal bio click chemistry to function, attach the VEGF protein, single chain VEGF protein to the surface of the diamonds. 
and we did several validations to verify that the VEGF was attached and functional. Just ELISA and SDS page, which is just, these are, this ELISA is really a, a plate based technique and then the SDS page. In general, okay, we can see that the VEGF is functionally active, on, is functional and it's on the, on the particles. So our conjugation scheme does work. And in general, it's also not just non-specific uptake of the VEGF, it is covalently bound. So the uh, click chemistry works. And then there is this tyrosine autophos distribution, autophosphorylation, sorry. I'm not going into details about how that works, but in general, it, it then demonstrates that these VEGF functionalized diamonds activate this autophosphorylation pathway at similar concentrations to free single chain VEGF at zero nan <clears throat> nanomolar concentration. So, okay, great. We can see that the VEGF is on the surface so our conjugation scheme works. And the next slide, I just wanted to go through this competition assay. So this competition assay involves using a toxic variant of the VEGF protein. So this toxic, so essentially what happens is when this toxic variant binds to the VEGF receptor on the cell, it then will cause the cell to die. If we then mix this toxic variant protein with our diamond, which contain VEGF, they will compete for access to these receptor sites on the uh, cells. In general, if the cells can then survive, we demonstrate that the VEGF on the diamond is active and successfully can compete with the toxic variant of the VEGF. And in general, we do see that. So it, it is comparable to, to a, just a free VEGF uh, variant, single free single chain VEGF. Okay, so I will say that the, uh, the IVIS imaging of these targeted examples was not as good, uh, I would say similar to the uh, EPR based uh, approach. So, and really that just needs optimization, but the ex vivo analysis of the tissue is pretty unmistakable. So this is the control. So this is no FNDs administered. This is FNDs administered, but not containing VEGF. And th this is FNDs with VEGF, which were administered. So it's, it's very obvious that the diamonds are accumulated in the tissue when they are targeted to VEGF. And then we actually then normalizing this to tumor area, we can see that the uptake is clearly, the fluorescent signal is clearly higher in the VEGF variant of diamond. So in general, okay, right. So this ex vivo analysis is excellent and it, it does validate that the diamonds do work in that sense and they can be visualized. And in general, this work is recently published in our bioconjugate chemistry down here. Okay, so that was essentially our, our work. And uh, I wanted to go through some very famous kind of examples in literature of some other demonstrations of diamonds. So this was a pretty seminal paper of using diamonds to target tumors. And this is actually using detonation nanodiamonds, so not fluorescent. But uh, actually what, what they did was upload doxorubicin, which is a chemotherapeutic drug, which is used to treat cancer. And what they found was that loading this drug onto the diamond surface causes a reduction in the uh, tumor growth, right? So the basic concept is that these small particles have very high surface area. So you could upload a lot of drug onto their surface and then get this slower controlled release of drugs directly at the tumor as opposed to just a freely a free drug which then is very fast diffusion and can almost you, you need to administer much higher doses actually of this free very free drug variant which is really a problem chemotherapy is not uh, a very good treatment in terms of the patient it, it's very unfortunate because this, these are very toxic treatments so this uh, approach can allow you to minimize the dose but get in effect, better efficacy of the drug. Um, okay, so moving on to uh, just a couple imaging applications. I wanted to, this paper is currently our collaborators and myself actually wrote, and this was utilizing this rapid thermal annealing approach. So we were doing this two color imaging with green and red fluorescent diamonds. The green fluorescent diamonds were produced in rapid thermal annealing approach. And you can see this uh, two color, these are in breast cancer cells. So we took basically two different lines of breath, the same breast cancer cells, put green diamond in one, put red diamond, and then mix the cells to just demonstrate. So these are not targeted in any way. It's just nonspecific uptake to the cells. But okay, we can see this two color imaging. And there have been some other demonstrations of two color, but this is one of the first ones where it's actually been done with confocal microscopy and not with some uh, electron beam excitation or cathodoluminescent microscopy 
or in one case, they're using IR emitting and NV emitting. So this is green and red emission from the NVN and NV centers. And I'd also like to point out, I don't show, show them here, but the, there's also the possibility of producing these yellow fluorescent diamonds, which are combinations of NV and NVN centers in the same particle. And as a result of this green emission from the NVN center and red emission from the NV center, you get yellow emission. In general, these can have some very interesting potential applications that we're thinking about with this fluorescence modulation. It would be interesting or if there's some energy transfer between these uh, two different um, color centers or how they interact with each other. But so that, that, that manuscript was just submitted and it's actually we're writing the responding to reviewer comments now. So hopefully that will be published soon. This is, I wanted to go into kind of a very interesting application, other application where this concept of the, if you're the doxorubicin example, this is instead not doxorubicin, but amoxicillin, which is a common antibiotic. And this was actually done a Dean Ho's group at UCLA. They've done a lot of, that was also the doxorubicin work was his group too. He's currently at uh, National University of Singapore. But so essentially, uh, gutta percha is a polymer that is used to, in root canal implants. What they, but they often have trouble with their mechanical stability and the likelihood of reinfection. So what, the, what this paper did was introduce diamonds with amoxicillin on their surface. So the amoxicillin provides you a broad spectrum antibiotic protection. So it prevents instances of reinfection. And additionally, the diamond particles provide you a mechanical stability of the gutta percha. And currently this is in uh, clinical trials. Uh, I was looking yesterday, supposedly the clinical trials are supposed to end in 2020. So yeah, this is a pretty neat application. It's also showing this approach of having a drug slowly released from the surface of a particle 